One in four American adults are diagnosed with a psychological disorder every year. As a psychology major, personality disorders are my special field of interest. Borderline personality disorder, also known as BPD, is prevalent in every culture across the world. It is one of the most challenging psychological disorders for both the client and the therapist. Today we will discuss the background, theories, and treatment of BPD. Let's begin by learning about the background of BPD. Borderline personality disorder is relatively new to the list of mental disorders. It is very different than most personality disorders, making it one of the most challenging disorders for all parties involved. This disorder was first coined in the 1930s when it was originally a catch-all diagnosis for the most difficult and treatment-resistant clients. These clients were thought to be bordering between neurosis and psychosis and on the edge of schizophrenia. It also extended to include the subgroup of clients that did not fit into the pre-existing diagnostic categories. Clarity and definition for this disorder came about in the 1980s when most experts came to regard it as a singular personality disorder. Symptoms of this disorder include frantic efforts to avoid real or imagined abandonment and patterns of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships, which are usually characterized by alternating extremes of idealization and devaluation, identity disturbance due to unstable self-image, impulsivity in at least two areas that are possibly self-damaging, such as promiscuity, spending, substance abuse, binge eating, and reckless driving. Also, reoccurrent suicidal behavior, gestures, threats, or self-mutilating behaviors are particularly common in individuals suffering from this disorder. Other symptoms include mood instability, chronic feelings of emptiness, intense anger and difficulty with anger management, and transient stress-related paranoid ideation or severe disassoci disassociative symptoms. In the United States alone, 5.9% of adults will experience BPD at some point during their lifetime. This particular disorder is most com more common than both bipolar and schizophrenia combined. It is estimated that between 30 and 60% of people suffering from a personality disorder have BPD, and 70% of the affected population are women. Now let's move on to the different theories of BPD. There are many different theoretical approaches to this disorder. One of the reasons that it is one of the most challenging disorders to confront. First, the biological perspective tries to identify physiological markers that distinguish BPD from other mental disorders. It's with this perspective that the idea of neurotransmitter dysregulation may in fact play a part in BPD. There has also been a link found with a person's predisposition to impulsivity increasing their risk of developing, developing this disorder. MRI techniques have uncovered some especially some interesting differences in brains of the people diagnosed with BPD, citing a smaller amygdala as a possible cause. The psychological perspective assesses that extreme negative experiences during childhood could be a root cause of BPD, listing disturbed childhood, family environment, parental psychopathology, and child abuse as variables in the emergence of this disorder in most individuals. The most common cause of BPD, according to this perspective, is childhood sexual abuse followed by childhood physical abuse. The cognitive behavioral approach suggests that people who are diagnosed with this disorder have a tendency to dichotomize their thinking about themselves and others, thinking in terms of all or nothing or black and white. So essentially, the gray area is inconceivable to these people. This would account for the sudden shifts in mood and idealization and devaluation of others. The sociocultural perspective suggests that the pressures of contemporary society strains the familiar relationship, giving rise to the deficient parenting, which in turn creates a higher risk of level of developing this disorder. Family difficulties, including depression, substance abuse, and antisocial behavior, can lead to the development of this disorder, and that can be carried on from generation to generation. One of the reasons why People who have first-generation relatives that have BPD are five times more likely to develop this disorder themselves. Leaving the different theories, let's move on to the different treatments of BPD. Treatment is difficult in these cases, another reason why it is one of the most challenging disorders to work with. Difficulties are apparent from the onset of therapy, usually because of the confusing nature of the client's initial presentation. At first glance, these individuals usually appear to be healthier than what they really are, and over time, the complex nature of the underlying issues are revealed. Individuals with BPD often have a hard time remaining in therapy long enough to make progress due to their volatility, inconsistency, and intensity. The most compelling therapeutical approach 
it, for the treatment of BPD is dialectical behavior therapy. This integrates supportive and cognitive behavioral treatments to reduce the frequency of self-destructive acts and to improve the client's ability to handle disturbing emotions. The strategy is to alternate between accepting the clients as they are and confronting their disturbing behaviors to help them change, identifying maladaptive behaviors and focusing on new ways to an analyze problems and develop healthier solutions are a part of the dialectical behavioral therapy. Other areas of importance for this form of therapy are regulating emotions, developing interpersonal effectiveness, learning to tolerate emotional distress, and developing self-management skills. The effectiveness of this treatment is apparent in clients who show considerable improvement in their symptoms. Transference-focused psychotherapy uses techniques of clarification, confrontation, and interpretation of the transference in the here and now of the therapeutic relationship. Clients treated by this approach also show positive changes in multiple domains over the duration of one year of outpatient treatment. No medication can effectively treat BPD, but several pharmacological interventions have been shown to be effective in treating specific symptoms. The most common of these groups of medications to use to treat these symptoms are antidepressants, antipsychotics, anticonvulsants, lithium, and mild tranquilizers. To wrap things up, BPD is one of the most challenging psychological disorders for both client and therapist due to its new emergence and difficult symptoms, multiple theories, and limited treatment. It is the most prevalently diagnosed personality disorder today. While one in four American adults will suffer from some type of mental disorder, one in five adults are diagnosed with a personality disorder, the most common being BPD. So if you think you might have a psychological disorder, talk to somebody about getting help today.